Welcome back. Today we're talking about adding and subtracting fractions. Before we can talk about adding and subtracting fractions, we need to talk about like fractions. Like fractions are something we need before we can add or subtract. So when we talk like fractions, they are like if they have the same denominator. On your own, think, pair, share, circle the fractions that could be common denominators or could be like fractions. I'll give you a hint, one of them needs to be simplified first. Adding and subtracting like fractions is very easy. They already have common denominators, so the addition process or the subtraction process is very simple. We just need to remember that like fractions have common denominators. That is step one with any fractions problem. So now I can jump straight to adding or subtracting the numerator following all of my negative rules with addition and subtraction. Remember, either keep those rules in mind or have a calculator that you are trained in at hand. Keep the denominator the same. Simplify. The last step to every fraction problem you will do for the rest of your life. Let's try the problem to the right. 5 plus 3 gives me a numerator of 8. My denominators, a lot of people try to add them, but they stay the same. It's still 10. 5 tenths plus 3 tenths is 8 tenths. Last step is always simplify. I'm going to do double mountain. 1 times 8 is 8. 2 times 4 is 8. 1 times 10 is 10. 2 times 5 is 10. Those are all my factors. I'm going to circle the biggest one in both lists. I'm going to divide top and bottom by it. I get four fifths. Remember, if you are still struggling with simplifying, do not let that be the reason your final answer, your final product is incorrect. Rewatch our old videos, go back through our notes, make sure you get some form of support. Four ninths plus two ninths, same denominators, they're like fractions. I can jump straight to adding or subtracting the numerator. Four plus two is six. The denominator stays the same, nine. Now I can simplify, I'll do double mountain again. I have one times six is six, two times three is six, one times nine is nine, three times three is nine. Biggest factor in both lists is three, divide it from top and bottom, I get two thirds. That's my final answer. Next problem, again, I see common denominator, so I have like fractions. That means I can jump straight to adding or subtracting my numerator. 3 minus 8, again, use your calculator or keep those negative rules in mind. I have $3, I owe someone 8, I am $5 in debt, or negative 5. My denominator stays exactly the same. Again, that's the best part about common denominators when you're adding. When they're already like fractions, you don't have to worry about turning them into a new denominator. You can just add, subtract, and the denominator is already right in front of you. You could try to simplify that, but 5 and 12 do not have any factors. It's already in simplest form. Before we can move any further and talk about what happens when we have unlike fractions, we need to talk in terms of multiples. There's a couple ways to think about what a multiple is. You can think of them as values that can be divided by another value without a remainder. Another way to think about this, and go, this goes back to the multiplication aspect of it, consecutive sets of values. One set of three, two sets of three, three sets of three, four sets of three. And this goes way back to when you were relatively young and just learning about values like this. Skip counting. When your teacher was telling you how to count by twos, two, four, six, or by fives, five, 10, 15, what they were really doing is they were teaching you multiples. Five times one is five. Five times two is 10. Five times three is 15. They were teaching you your multiples. So let's try the multiples of three. One way to think about it is sets of three sets of one, or sorry, three sets of one or one set of three in this case is three. Two sets of three is six. Three sets of three is nine, 12, 15, 18, 21. Again, if you know you're skip counting by threes, it helps. Multiples of six. Now you may have a calculator moment here. Remember, you're just multiplying that value, six, by each set. One, two, three, four. So each multiplier in order. One times six is six. Two times six is 12. 3 times 6 is 18, 4 times 6 is 24, 5 times 6 is 30, 6 times 6 is 36, 
7 times 6 is 42. So it's a really great calculator moment. It does not take that long to find those values, but it's going to really help us when we have to move on to finding unlike fractions or uh, adding and subtracting unlike fractions. In order to add or subtract those unlike fractions, we need to have the lowest common multiple. This is the smallest multiple that two numbers have in common. This is also known as the lowest common denominator. The best way to find this lowest common multiple or lowest common denominator is to list out all the multiples of both values. I would say list about four or five. As you see, the last step tells you what to do if you don't find the right answer. Step two, circle the smallest value common to both lists. Step three, if you don't see a common number or a common multiple, list out more multiples in each list. So let's try 12 first. 12 times 1 is 12. 12 times 2 is 24. 12 times 3 is 36. 12 times 4 is 48. 12 times 5 is 60. Then we go through and we do our 8s. 8 times 1 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. 8 times 3 is 24. 8 times, oh, I see a number that's in common already in both lists. In this case, 24. I don't have to list out five if I notice it. You won't always notice it, but just in case, you don't have to keep going. If the goal is to find the smallest number in common, don't keep looking after you found it. Now, what we do know about like fractions, they have common denominators. So logically, unlike fractions would have uncommon denominators. Instead of having three and three as denominators, we have three and seven. So they are different. We can't just jump to adding and subtracting the numerator. What we need to do first is find the LCM, the lowest common multiple. Again, this is also known as the lowest common denominator. It's the smallest denominator that these two fractions that you're adding or subtracting could possibly have in common. Once we do that, we make equivalent fractions with this new denominator. Okay, we'll talk about a couple different ways you could accomplish that. Add or subtract the numerators following your negative rules. That's now at this point we're picking up because we already have common denominators, which makes them like fractions. We turn something we don't know into something we do know, like how to add or subtract uh, common denominators. Simplify is always the last step. Always, always, always the last step. So in this case, I'm going to find my LCM. I do that by listing out my multiples. There are my multiples of 8. There are my multiples of 12. The smallest number they both have in common is 24. Now, there's a couple ways here where you can find equivalent fractions. You could think back to the equivalent fractions lesson we've done on this, uh, in this class, and you could set up a proportion. One fraction equal to another fraction with a missing value, cross, multiply, and solve. Or if we look in our eight, in our list of eight multiples, the one that is circled is the third multiple. So I'm going to multiply the fraction that has a denominator of eight by three, top and bottom. The 12, look at the list of 12 multiples. 24 is our second multiple. So I'm going to multiply that fraction, top and bottom, by two. It's a nice, easy shortcut, and it actually is derived from what we know of multiplication, those rules that are all inherent to this. So I rewrite the whole problem. Don't just scribble over the fractions that are there. Rewrite the whole problem. 3 times 3 is 9. 8 times 3 is 24. 3 times 2 is 6. 12 times 2 is 24. There's my new set of fractions. If I did everything correctly, I should have common denominators, making this two like fractions. So it takes us back to what we just did. Add your numerators. 9 plus 6 is 20, or sorry, 15. My denominator stays the same, it's 24. And then I simplify. 1 and 15, 3 and 5. I'm going to divide 24 divided by 15. Nope. 24 divided by 5. Nope. 24 divided by 3 gives me a whole number. There's my greatest common factor. Divide top and bottom. There's my final answer. Again, circle your common answer. If you look at what I just did, that's the amount of work you should be showing. So in order to make sure that we don't confuse your final answer with an equivalent or unsimplified answer, hone the greater in on the correct answer. You never want to make a greater work. 
So, 1 6 plus 5 eighths. Again, uncommon fractions, unlike fractions. I need to deal with this denominator. Find the multiples. 6 times 1 is 6. 6 times 2 is 12. 6 times 3 is 18. 6 times 4 is 24. Here's my multiples of 18. Now, if I look at it, 18 is in both lists. 18 is in both lists. So, I'm going to multiply my fraction that has a denominator of 6 by 3 because 18 is the third multiple. 6, 12, 18. It's the third. So, I multiply top and bottom by 3. 18 is the first multiple in the list for 18. So, I just multiply by 1. Leave it alone. Rewrite the whole problem. 3 times 1 is 3. 16 times 18, or 6. 6 times 3 is 18. The other fraction remains the same because anything times 1 is just itself. So now I add my numerators together. My denominator stays the same. 3 plus 5 is 8. 18 stays the same. I'm going to simplify. Find my denominators of 8, or sorry, my uh, factors of 8. 18 divided by 8, decimal. 18 divided by 4, decimal. 18 divided by 2 gives me a whole number. So there's my GCF, my greatest common factor. Divide top and bottom, always circle your answer. Should get 4 ninths. Now for the next one, we're going to find our multiples yet again. That's the only way to start with these. We will discuss some things that people see as possible shortcuts and we'll again discuss their shortcomings. So 25 times 25 or sorry times 1 is 25, 25 times 2 is 50, 25 times 3 is 75, 10 times 1 times 2 times 3. List out your multiples. Again, list out 4 or 5. I see right there that 50 is the biggest or sorry, smallest numbers in both lists. So 25, my fraction that has 25 as a denominator. I list, look at the list of multiples. There are two fra or factors there, multiples there. Sorry, guys. 1 times 25, 2 times 20, or 25 is 50. So that is my second multiple. So I multiply top and bottom by 2. 50 in my list of 10 multiples is the fifth multiple. So I multiply top and bottom by that fraction by 5. Rewrite the whole thing. 12 times 2 is 24. 25 times 2 is 50. 3 times 5 is 15. 10 times 5 is 50. Again, we don't do the work because we're horrible, awful people trying to torture you. We do it because there's a lot of other skills here. Up to this point in this problem, we've already covered equivalent fractions. We've covered multiples. We've covered uh, by doing multiples. We've practiced our multiplication skills. Somewhere in there, I'm sure you've used a calculator. So, we are testing all these skills. Show us all these skills. The answer is not what we're shooting for. Add up our numerators. 24 plus 15 gives me 39. 50 just remains the same. Oh, it should be 50. That's a little typo, guys. Sorry. I'm going to find the factors of 39, the smaller number. 3 and 13 are the only ones other than 39. 1 is my... Greatest common factor, so I'm going to simplify. It should be 39 over 50. 39 over 50 for the final answer. On your own, try that last problem. Thanks for coming by, and I'll see you in class.